Here is our lesson 1.8 for geometry. So today in lesson 1.8, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into those logic statements. So yesterday we talked about our conditional statements and then that reverse, which we gave our good vocabulary to called the converse. So today we're going to talk about even more types of statements like that. Uh, so our lesson focus is again on those conditional statements. Today we're going to throw in some negation of those statements. So what if things are not true? That that's going to come into play. So those things, uh, yesterday we talked about the converse. Today we're going to throw in the inverse and then the contrapositive as well. So here we go. Now, I'll, some of this is review. In fact, we're going to start by reviewing what we talked about yesterday. Uh, so before this, we've talked about our conditional statements, right? And conditional statement was if P then Q, or P implies Q. So we had uh, an example of if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. All right, and we can just kind of go along with our true and false. So is that true? If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent? Absolutely true. We uh, proved that, right, with a formal two-column proof way back in 1.2, I believe. So uh, we do know that that one is a true statement. That was our original conditional statement. Then yesterday, we started talking about this reverse, which we gave a good vocabulary name called the converse. So the converse is where we switch the order of the if and the then. So the Q came first in our if part, and the P came second in our then part. So if Q, then P. So we flip-flopped. And I thought this color coding of my example really showed that very clearly. So now our if part is if two angles are congruent, then they are right angles. If two angles are congruent, then they are right angles. So I switched the if and the then for my original conditional statement. So now, let's see. We talked about this one yesterday, right? If two angles are congruent, do they have to be right angles? The answer is no. I could have two angles that are congruent that aren't right angles. 100 degrees and 100 degrees, right? 20 degrees and 20 degrees. So the converse for this particular theorem happens to be false, right? And we talked about yesterday that this was an actual theorem and not a definition. If our example, I probably should put that over here instead of there. If uh, our example was a definition, then we would know for sure, no matter what, that the converse would always be true as well. But this is just a theorem. All right, so now we've got some new ones today. So we had the conditional, we have the converse. Now our next new one is called the inverse. All right, so the inverse has these little squigglies going on here. Okay, now this is new. This isn't something you've we've talked about before. So this little squiggly means not. So if not P, then not Q. If not P, then not Q. So think about that a little bit uh, again. So that's what the inverse. So no notice we've gone back to the original order but we've put not in front of both of those. This is that negation that we were talking about, right? So inverse is the original order, but with not in front of both of them. So here in our example, it kind of helps us really understand what we're talking about. So if two angles are not right angles, then they are not congruent. So now I've thrown in there, what happens if it's not true? So if two angles are not right angles, then they are not congruent. Is that true or false? Let's see. Think of two angles that are not right angles. Does that mean that they are not congruent? There's no possible way that they're congruent if they're not right angles. Well, I could have 40 degrees and 40 degrees, right? They're not right angles, but they are congruent. So just because I know that they are not right angles does not imply that they are not congruent. So this one is false. I could think of an example where it's not true, right? So it's a lot of nots going on when we're talking about our negation of our statements. So we could think of 40 degrees and 40 degrees. These are not right angles, 
but they are congruent. So that's why we're proving that one false. So the inverse is the original order, but you put not in front of both of them. All right, then our last new type is called the contrapositive. All right, the contrapositive, sorry, my pen stopped working here for a second. The contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. If not Q, then not P. So notice on this one, I have switched, oh boy, I have switched back to my converse order. So I've switched the order and I have put not in front of them. There we go. Oh, I'm back in business. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulties there. Okay, so this is now the switch order and put not in front of them. So I'm in the converse order. So I flip flop the if and the then, but I've also added the nots. So in our, if we look at this again, if two angles are not congruent, then they are not right angles. If two angles are not congruent, then they are not right angles. So let's think about this, okay. Let's see, think of two angles that are not congruent. All right, hmm. let's see, 100 degrees and 20 degrees, two angles that are not congruent. Then they are not right angles. Well, are either one of those the right angles? Nope. So that's true, right? Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, but what if one of them is a right angle? 90 degrees and 80 degrees. Those are not congruent, but one of them is a right angle. But notice it says they are not right angles, meaning they are not both right angles. So it's still true meaning, because it's just kind of how it's worded, right? They are both not right angles, so that is that is true. So it's a little bit kind of funky. The other way you can think about it is, you know, these are, if they were both right angles, then they would be congruent, but it says that they cannot be congruent. All right, so this one is, in fact, true. Two angles that are not congruent are not both right angles. All right, so there's our original statement, if P, then Q. Our converse, if Q, then P, so switch the order. Our inverse, if not P, then not Q, goes back to the original order and then puts nots in front of them, negates them. And our contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. So you switch the order and put the nots in. A lot going on in that contrapositive. Must be why that's such a confusing name. <laughs> so take a look at your true and falses here, right? Now in this theorem, they're not necessarily all true. A definition, they would all be true, but the theorem not necessarily. So in this case, our original statement was true. We proved it. The converse was false. The inverse was false. But the contrapositive was always true, or was also true. So that's kind of interesting, right? Now if we think about that a little bit, if you know that P is true, then Q always happens. That means if you don't have Q, then there's no way that you had P. If you know that P happens, then Q always happens. If you don't have Q, then you couldn't have had P, right? If you go backwards, so if I have P, then Q has to happen. So if I don't have Q, then there's no way I could have had P. Because if I had P, then I would have had Q as well. But here it says I don't have Q. So that's kind of why it's a little bit confusing to think about it. But that's why those two always go together, no matter what, every single time. In fact, that's a theorem in itself, a theorem about theorems, which is really confusing. But just so that it's just something that you know, is that if the conditional statement is true, the contrapositive is also true always no matter what these two things always go together
The conditional statement and the contrapositive are always together, no matter what. If the conditional statement is true, the contrapositive is also true. All right, so that's kind of a theorem about theorems, but that's something that you could always just keep in mind whenever you're trying to figure out if things are true and false. If you find a conditional statement and it's true, boom, you know that contrapositive is true as well. All right, so that's kind of a, a lot going on. So really what we're just wanting you to do is make sure that you can understand how to take those conditional statements and change them around into their different forms in case that you need them, right? The converse is the one that we use the most often. We've already been using converses in our uh, proofs, but inverses and contrapositives could also pop up here and there. So we want to make sure that you can really see all the different forms of each conditional statement. So here's another one that's not math related. Those get kind of fun, right? If Megatron is a member of the Schomburg High School football team, then he is a student at Schomburg High School. There's our if P then Q. So converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So I've actually given you some starts on it, right? And then you just need to fill in the blanks. And if you are looking at your slides in presentation mode, if you take it out of presentation mode, you can actually just slide each of these boxes down here into its correct spot if you want to. Okay, but you don't have to. Um, you could write it out. In fact, what I'm going to do, because it's hard for me to actually slide things around on the, my program that I'm using, is I'm just going to start from scratch. If you would rather just start from scratch, that'll actually help you out when you get to your homework tonight. But if you need a little boost and want to do the drag and drop idea, by, by all means, go ahead and do that. So if P, then Q. If, if Megatron is a member of the SHS football team. So if Megatron is a member of the SHS football team, then he is a student at Schomburg High School. All right, so there's our if P, here's P, then Q. This one's Q, right? So our, our converse was if Q, then P, right? I have to switch the order. So if I switch the order, it would say if Megatron is a student at SHS, then P, he is a member of the SHS football team. Now, as we go along, we could probably talk about some true and false here. So my original statement, if Megatron is a member of the SHS football team, then he's a student at SHS. That's probably true. They don't usually let uh, too many uh, people who are not students be on the football team. But think about the converse. If Megatron is a student at SHS, then he's a member of the SHS football team. Well, that's not true. There's quite a few people who are go to SHS that aren't on the football team. So the converse there is false. Uh, as you see these, you'll find that it's actually pretty difficult to find real-life situations where both the original and the converse are true. Um, probably would be a definition of something if you found it to be. But so that's always a little challenge I like to give to my students is can you come up with a real life situation where both the original and the converse are true and it gets fun and tricky, but we'll focus on Megatron here for today. All right, so hopefully you remembered how to do the converse from yesterday. Next is the inverse. So remember, you go back to the original order, if P, then Q, but we add in the nots, right? Not P implies not Q. So if you're going to go for this, we're going to start with the original. So I have if Megatron is not a member of the SHS football team. Then, whoops, sorry, bumped it. Then he is not a student at SHS. 
All right, let's see. If Megatron is not a member of the SHS football team, then he is not a student at SHS. So if we think about true and false there, so if we know that he's not part of the football team, does that mean that he can't be a student at SHS? Well, that's false, right? If he's not a member of the football team, he could still be a student at SHS. He's just not on the football team. So that inverse there is false. All right, then our last one, the contrapositive. This is the one where you switch the order and put not. So now I have not Q implies not P. So I'm going to switch the Q and the P, and I'm going to put nots in as well. So Q was that he was a student at SHS. So if Megatron is not a student at SHS, then he is not a member of the SHS football team. All right, so if he's not a student at SHS, if we know for sure that he's not a student at SHS, then he can't be a member of the SHS football team. And even if we didn't know our theorem we just talked about, we would know that that's, that's true, right? But for sure, we know it's true because the original was true, so the contrapositive has to be true as, as well. Hopefully that's helping you kind of see how those two always go together. A lot of times I do get the question, do the converse and inverse always go together? It's pretty often that they do, but it's not always like that original and the contrapositive. It's a little bit harder to explain that one, but, um, you know, because the converse oftentimes depends on the original and things like that. So it's, you can't always guarantee that those two go together, but the original and the contrapositive definitely always go together because we usually aren't right writing an if then unless it's true. All right, so that was an example, and hopefully you kind of got the idea of how to decide if they're true and false as well. Um, and that's going to really be your job for today. So just wrapping it up here, you know, watch out for those conditional statements. Recognize when you're going to turn them negative, right? Put the nots in there. And then really be able to understand how to take an original if-then statement and turn it into its converse, its inverse, and its contrapositive. And really be able to tell, uh, decide if they're true or false. So your homework today uh, is just a couple of problems. It's only two. makes you think that they're going to be, you know, it's going to go fast, but they're going to be writing all the different forms of each of those and deciding if they're true and false. So it's maybe going to take a little bit of writing, but that's why we didn't give you too many of them today. You always have that additional extra practice there to go on if you're kind of having trouble deciding if they're true and false. Those would be some good ones to do.